there, I'm Christina from HairRomance.com. Let's talk about the right way to straighten your hair. And I'm gonna show you how to straighten it whether you've got thick, frizzy hair or fine hair with tips of both hair types. Because this is what my hair looked like before I started. <laughs> Now this tutorial I'm going to be using my Dyson Corral to straighten my hair and I did a post before where I did like a first impressions review and it was the first time I'd straightened my hair in a while and a couple of comments which I think are perfectly fair on that video said that my hair wasn't dead straight because to be honest I was a little scared of using a straightener it's been such a long time and I'm not a huge fan of super dead straight hair on myself because my hair it's the opposite of how my hair naturally is and it's hard to maintain and in the past I've done a lot of damage to my curls so I was like a little bit careful careful testing out the corral since my first video about the Dyson corral I've been playing around with it a little bit more and falling more in love with it um, it is an incredible design and being able to control the temperature and actually get more contact of my hair on the plates I'm I found it gets amazing curls and is able to keep my hair straight without making it feel super dried out that's the thing I'm really loving about it um, this isn't sponsored by the way just my opinions but since then I've had so many more goes in my hair and I want to show you a much flatter way that if you really really want to get that perfect flat hair how to go about it <laughs> okay so let's talk about the state of my hair right now I want to give a full test and a full demonstration of how to straighten a few different hair types. So my hair is naturally curly wavy and I've dried it in two different ways. I have on this side blow dried with a brush and to smooth that a little bit first and this one I haven't. I've just tried to air dry it so that it's as rough and as frizzy and as wavy and messy as it could be. So whatever you're starting with I want to be able to show that it's possible to achieve the same result at the end of this. So first up uh, I want to give you some tips that will work no matter what your hair type. It's really easy I'm just going to turn it on and I'm going to keep it in this very cute little stand here when I'm not using it. My first step when you're straightening your hair is to try and keep yourself cool while you're doing it. It's pretty hard in here, I've got lights, I'm in the studio, but I am maybe gonna use, oh, straight now. Um, I am maybe going to use my hair dryer on cold just to cool myself down a little bit. Can really help, uh, particularly to help set your hair because once your hair is cool, that's how it's going to stay. So really important to cool your hair the way you want it to stay. <laughs> okay, now the first thing we need to talk about is how to prep your hair first. It's really important to use a heat protectant when you're styling your hair and using any heat styling. Uh, I've used a leave-in cream, which I applied when my hair was still damp straight out of the shower. And I've also used a leave-in spray, just for a little bit of extra protection on dry hair. So now it's time just to section my hair. And really to get a really good result when your hair is this frizzy is you have to work in really small sections. It's going to be a lot easier when we get to this side of hair that's already been smoothed out or if your hair is naturally straighter or wavier, like just sort of less frizzy and coarse as my hair is. But what I wanted to also add is uh, you really need to make sure that the hair as it's entering the iron has no uh, knots and is as smooth as, and keep a little bit of tension in the hair as well. And heat it up and we clamp at the root there just to smooth it and as I come down I also like to do just a little slight turn just so that it gives me a little bit of a curve at the end it's not that dramatic uh, you can also do any extra styling or actually turn it but I'm just concentrating at the moment just to smooth this out and the thing I also love about this styler compared to other ones I've used is I can still sort of touch my hair afterwards it's pretty hot but Sometimes when you're straightening your hair, you can almost burn your hands by touching your hair. I always feel, since, especially since I've been practicing with this, so much safer and I haven't had any burns. So I'm fairly clumsy. This, if there's a way to burn yourself, I'll probably find it, but this is really working well. Oh, all right. So let's compare that to what it looked like before <laughs> with my next section. And let's keep smoothing. 
So we want to be taking really small sections and then as we've done this section, I like to move it to the back and then keep moving the next section over my shoulder. So I'm sort of straightening forward and then moving back. I find that's just easier with my own hands. That's often why when you're at the salon they get a, uh, an easy way to do it because they're working backwards and able to get the hair to sit exactly where it's going to lay when your hair's done. Doing it on yourself you always need to kind of work around so that is something to think about. But you can go back in towards the end and just do a few little adjustments. And at this point once I get a little bit of a pile of hair here I also like to take the cool shot button And I'm going to keep cooling my neck down and just straightening the sections, cooling the sections that I've just straightened so that they stay that way because the humidity in Sydney and the heat today is your enemy when you're trying to straighten frizzy hair. All right, next tiny section. I like to keep it with the brush for the first section. Make sure I'm getting to the top and then slowly pass through. Nice. And for all of these sections, I'm going to be doing probably two passes because my hair is really, really coarse and frizzy. It's, if you have finer hair or hair that's straighter, uh, you might want to just fast forward to the other section. Maybe I put a little timestamp below so that you can just watch how I do the other side because there'll be tips that are more relevant to uh, straighter hair. This is more for my coarse curly hair girls. If you really want to straighten it, you've got to work slowly, work in small sections and really take your time with it. And that way it's definitely going to last. And for example, like that section didn't look too thick, but I can tell that if I really, because I can see how much frizz and how much sort of curl is sitting in these sections, that I'm going to split it in half again and clip that back out of the way. So you really, it is a little bit more time consuming now, but overall you have a longer lasting style. And for me, it's all about saving time in the long run. Now I'm going to continue the same steps, small sections, using my brush and just giving a slight curve to the ends and let's speed this up because I've got a lot more hair to get through. tips of straightening the back of your hair where it's a little bit harder to reach. Depending on how you want your hair to sit, there's two ways to go. You can either go directly across to the side, bring it slightly down, or go up. The difference between the two is just going to be the volume that's in your hair. If you want more volume, straightening straight up is going to be easier. And then depending on how long your hair is, you might need to bring it a bit more to the front. Uh, but otherwise, straightening to the side and down is going to give you that smoother, sleeker look. That's what I'm going for with this look, so I'll show you exactly what I do. I get in as close as I can to the back and smooth over there, and then do one long straight run out to the side. But if I was going for more volume, holding it here, bring it up this way. Oops, I'm off screen. <laughs> and bring it out that way is going to give you more volume and make it easier to reach to the back. Oh my gosh, I'll tell you, it is so hot today. We are getting there. I am going to show you some more tips for the front here, but hot. Okay. Now we've got through most of the side here sped up because the tips are all the same. Small sections, using a brush and moving slowly. When we get to the top here though, we kind of have to worry about one other issue which I've often seen with straightening, where you get those little marks where you can see where the straightener started. If you have really curly or coarse hair, it can help to use your hair dryer and a brush to straighten those roots out a little bit first because the straightener can only reach up so far. But I can show you how to avoid the marks at the start of your hair. 
What you need to do is take a small section of hair and instead of straightening down, what we're going to do is straighten out. The reason we do this is it also does help add a little bit of volume, but you're definitely going to avoid those straightener marks at the root of your hair. And you want to start quite close and move with a full, couple of little tiny light straightening sections. And then as you go through your hair, just pull that through for one smooth stroke. And you can see I don't have any dent or a little bit more volume. You can see it just sort of sits up by itself, but I don't have any dent or any mark at the start there. The difference between this super smooth hair and my actual hair texture. So that works. So I'll show you again, just so you can see it. Let me grab another section of hair down. Keep the hair almost sort of ver vertical so that you can get in there and then straighten through. And you get a perfectly straightened section without any marks at the top. And this is the last section on this side of my head. Amazing. One side done. So now if we can remember what my hair looked like at the start, it was completely untreated, very frizzy, very coarse. And now this is the finish with the Dyson Corel. And I haven't used any shine spray or any serum. It's just really imparted a really lovely shine. I don't know if you can see that in my hair. And I may add a little bit of serum just to seal my hair and kind of make it last a little bit longer. But this result's been amazing. And this is what I've had while I've been uh, practicing with the styler before. And if you've got coarse hair, you'll definitely probably want to use a little bit of a serum, maybe even a little bit of a hairspray just to kind of seal this in as much as possible so that it will last as long as you can. You know, if you have curly or frizzy hair that when you straighten it, you want it to last. And this definitely does. Now I'm going to go on to do the other side of my hair. And I want to share some different straightening tips because they'll be more relevant if your hair is fine or is more straight to wavy and you want to get more of that true glass finish on your hair. All right, let's go. Now, before I started filming, I did blow dry this fairly smooth, but that's the thing with when it's just blow dried versus actually smooth like this, the humidity's come back in and really affected my hair. So it's still kind of frizzing in these underneath sections. But the tips I want to share are about using it on a lower temperature. When you have fine hair, you want to take extra special care of it. You don't need to be using a high temperature and you don't want to be doing too many passes with any heat styling. You want to try and keep it as simple as possible. And I love that on the Dyson Corral, you can drop it down to 165 if you've got really fine hair and it works incredibly well to straighten and smooth your hair at that temperature. When you're straightening hair that's fine, you don't need to worry about taking a smaller section. And the nice thing I've found with using the Dyson is that it will actually just hold the section in place for you with, because of the flexing plates. I find that works really, really well. And there is a trick which I've talked about on coarse hair for doing the top. But if you just skipped ahead to this, I'm gonna show you how to avoid getting the straightener mark right at the top of your root here. The trick is to hold your hair out at sort of a perpendicular angle and bring the straightener in just to do a couple of soft passes just near the root. That allows you to kind of keep that perfect straight line going from root to tip without any of like the telltale sort of little dents from using a straightener to smooth your hair. So you might be wondering why I would bother blow drying my hair when I can get this kind of result from just using the irons. And reason is two, partly to reduce the heat damage to my hair. I can only do one pass to get the result that I get on this side with two passes when my hair is that frizzy to begin with. And while it is reduced heat damage because it's a lower heat, it's still direct heat contact on my hair. So anything I can do to reduce that, it's just gonna make my hair feel healthier in the long run. And the other one is maybe time. Uh, it doesn't take that long for me to blow dry my hair and I do get a little bit more root volume uh, by blow drying. And that is just a little difference between blow drying on this side versus just straightening on this side. But I'd love to know if you have a preference. Do you just straighten from when your hair's really frizzy or do you prefer to do a blow dry first? When straightening thick or curly hair, I always work in quite small, narrow, horizontal sections and straighten down. But with fine hair, here's a different technique that I prefer. Work in more slightly vertical sections. So instead of taking slices 
um, that are very narrow and then working in small pieces across. I work in more sort of bands across the hair and this way I angle the hair out and by straightening this way just gives a little bit more volume at the root here and I think that that is a little bit more flattering in fine hair because it doesn't weigh all of your hair down. It can give a little bit of a lift even when you're straightening. Another technique for getting more volume in fine hair is to actually straighten in the opposite direction that you're going to be wearing your hair. So I sort of straighten up and then instead of pulling down to this side where I'll be wearing my hair, bringing it over this side and then flipping it back just gives the same straightening but with so much more lift and volume. And similarly, I like to do this with the underneath sections of my part line. My part, I'll still straighten the way that I'm going to be wearing my hair so that it sits where I want. But these few underneath layers, I'll show you exactly what I mean. I'm going to straighten them over to this side instead. So going lightly at the roots just to make sure we don't leave a mark. And then angling all the way over. And then when you flip this back, you can see how much more volume that's instantly created. Ooh. But if you do that with your part, can't you may not get that sort of really nice sort of sleek finish. So I'll still do the part in this direction. But by having those layers straightened the other way underneath, you'll find you get that like smooth, satisfying top layer, but that extra little lift underneath, which I think makes such a big difference. So on a very warm and humid day, these are the results from straightening my hair and I'd love to know what you think. Hopefully there's been some tips for both fine hair and for curly thick hair so that you get the results that you're looking for. I haven't applied any product yet to my hair. This is just from straightening and I have a tip for getting all of those little baby hairs and flyaways. And that is using hairspray on a makeup brush. I do this a lot. I love this. So I spray a little bit of hairspray directly onto an old makeup brush, a clean one, and then just use it to paint down, particularly along your part line, where if you've got any new hairs or hairs that are just messing with your sleek finish, I find that this works just to apply the right amount of product, but without overloading your hair or making it feel stiff or sticky. Now to make your straight hair last longer, I also do recommend using a serum or an anti-humidity hairspray just to give a little bit more hold. For me, I need it because I live in a very humid place. Oh, sorry. Oh, it's reminded me that, oh, I left my straightener on. <laughs> There's a great tip about the Dyson straightener. If you're not using it, it beeps and it will also automatically shut off. And I love that you can um, close it so no fingers inside. Very, very good. So if you're in Sydney or somewhere humid, an anti-humidity spray is great. I really like the All Bay one if you're after a recommendation. Thank you so much for watching. Come over to hairromance.com where I've got lots of tutorials and hairstyles. And you can also subscribe here on YouTube, like this video, and you'll be notified of my next one if you hit the little bell as well. Over on Instagram, I'm at hairromance. I would love to see your hairstyles. Send me a message or tag me in your pic. I would love to see. Have fun with your hair and I'll see you soon. Bye.